Blog Talk Radio. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all my blessed beloveds out there. I want to let you know that I love you and I think you're beautiful and I'm so grateful for all of the beautiful people in my life. It's just amazing um, to be surrounded by so many people with so many experiences and inspirational stories and, and messages of healing, mind, body, and soul, and that was the intent of the show. I... Uh, Woke up January 2nd out of a very, very peaceful sleep going, up. Oh, I'm going to do a radio show. And it's just been such a rewarding experience. And I've been introduced to some really incredible people. And it's a great journey. And I'm so glad you're here to join us today. Today, on Humpity Hump Day, it's a little rainy again. We're doing that Eeyore, where's my tail at this point. Poor Chloe didn't want to get up this morning. She's like, Mama. I don't want to. But the good news is she has Friday and Monday off. So I said, get through today, get through tomorrow, and you get to sleep in for the next four days. That's pretty cool. So she was grateful and jumped out of bed and put on her warm clothes because we've had, what, two weeks of rain now? Yeah, it's been off and on. It's not been, like, constant, mostly at night. It's been drizzly. I feel like we're in England. I know, I know. My, my pen pal in Ireland, we still share, share pictures, and, well, we're about the same. <laughs> but the good news is he did get a bike, so that was a good thing. And he's cruising around in, in the rain with wisps in Ireland, and um, that's fun. But today's show is going to, we're going to talk about compassion, which I think we kind of re- need to look at again as a subject matter. And I invite anyone out there who is or is not sneaking us at work to give us a call and tell us stories about compassion or how you might be struggling with being compassionate. Um, The number here is 347-205-9443. And just an update on my week. It's been pretty mellow. I like that. I'm busy, as usual, but really really working on that balance thing and I'm on my third book. Woohoo! When I had a nice hot tubby the other night, bubbles, jasmine bubbles. Mm. Love it. And uh watched a really great movie Friday night, Midnight in Paris. I thought it was just funny. Great movie. Um really enjoying my time. Good. Really yeah. mellow and uh really trying to take October as a mellow, relaxing month because it sounds like November is gonna be Steadfast and well, you know what's really funny? It's usually the opposite for me. Yeah. And November's looking to be extremely busy. Yeah. October's looking to be extremely busy. <laughs> um, so there's some of us that never know where the off button is. Um, mm-hmm. That would be me. Mm-hmm. You're learning. <laughs> You're learning. But um, it's you know it's good busy though. It's yeah. not you very know, productive. I'm just it is productive. Um, We've got a lot of things going on. I actually, we're having an open house at Journey to Wellness in Dover um, on November 17th. It's our annual harvest um, type um, health and wellness where it's called um, Harvest Your Health. And we always make really yummy food, um, healthy food, healthy alternatives that you can um, make during the holiday season. Um, We always like to strive on that as we are a health center. But... um, It's always fun. You just come out and you can try free mini sessions and talk to the practitioners and learn a little bit more about uh, holistic health and how it can uh, be incorporated in your health plan. Very cool. Well, my exciting news when I woke up this morning was I was nominated for the Yahoo Women Shine, Women Who Shine. Right. And uh, in order to win a $10,000 grant so that I can keep doing what I do for all of you, I need votes. Votes, votes, votes. So go on our Facebook and vote. So, yep, if you don't mind, I'm I'm very grateful for all the votes, and we're still waiting for it to populate in the mm-hmm. Women Who Shine. Um, so mm-hmm. definitely be on the lookout. And Facebook, it's facebook.com backslash celiacrose. And 
that will definitely give more momentum to um, yes. all of the speaking engagements and everything that I'm trying to put together. And I nominated Amy this morning as well. So, again, same process. Go on and vote. And uh, Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, um, so how has your week been aside from the... the I'm home? doing pretty good. I'm getting used to my schedule. This um, late start for school on Wednesdays has really put me in a loop. Um, yeah. I don't know what the board was thinking. Um, but anyway, it's every Wednesday my kid goes in at... Um, she gets on the bus at 9.30 instead of 7 every Wednesday. I can't imagine the community impact because not all of Well, employers... obviously the community impact was not a factor in the decision. Right. Because, right. I mean, I under, what they're saying is that the teachers have more time to develop more programs for the kids. It's a workshop time thing, which I understand, but I, I didn't know why the half-day thing wasn't working. <laughs> I'll give them a full day a month. I don't know. They have to make it up or something. But I just they it, it's just it's got to be hard for people who work right. you know regular nine to five job. Right. I mean That's I'm lucky I where I'm self employed. Right. It still impacts me because it you know I can't take that client in the morning. Right. You know and um it it's it's really thrown my week uh, you know because I keep forgetting I'm not used to this. I'm used to a half day once a month. I'm not used to every Wednesday. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> But so maybe I'm, that's a great place to, you know, talk about compassion. Right. We'll circle around and talk about compassion and how to see that compassionately. Mm-hmm. So As what else it, is going yeah. on? Well, just, you know, the same old stuff. How's the product line? The product line is I can't keep up with it. I'm going to probably have to hire somebody to help me make it because I, you're doing very I, well. I yeah. am. I'm, it's just defining, you know. It's that whole that's what my lesson is this year is time management. Um <laughs> I have some but I have too much on my plate. So um trying to get my product line which is a organic made just by me for those who are sensitive to um petrochemicals. Um I decided to make this line because my whole family suffers from that condition and um I want to take the guesswork out of you having to read every single label. You don't need to anymore. <laughs> I so that's what I'm working on. It's just me myself and I though. So um you know, um if I have just going out to the fairs too. I'm booking fair events and mm-hmm. um we're looking at um what Rusty and I are looking at one at um possibly the Red Hook Brewery. We'll let you know a little bit about that if we decide to participate. Um it's a health and wellness event um that's going on down there in mid October. You said October seventeenth, maybe. Yeah, I, I think that's yeah, yeah, yeah. So that'll be fun getting mm. getting out there, cruising, hanging out, and yeah, maybe we can learn how to do this broadcasting on, on, on at location. <laughs> right, right. All of these things. <laughs> so today, I really want to delve into compassion. I believe. Um, well, we'll get into that. But compassion, by definition, my good old friend Webster, you know the books that we used to carry as kids with Webster on it. Now you just type it into the computer and virtually all of a sudden 14 definitions come up and some of them are accurate, whereas others will be inaccurate. But I follow I follow Webster pretty, pretty by mm-hmm. the book. <laughs> all right, mm. so... Um, compassion is a feeling of deep sympathy and sorrow for another who is stricken by misfortune, accompanied by a strong desire to alleviate the suffering. Hmm. Compassion is a tough subject for some, I think, um, because we, I think we are naturally compassionate. Mm-hmm. I think innately, even as children, we see people as people. Then we develop these skills to we see get people. Conditioned as black or white or tall or skinny or fat or zitty or curly-haired or straight-haired mm-hmm. or, or, you know, all of these judgments, all of these critical negative words. And over time, um, it really makes an impact, I think. And, and we're seeing that impact mm-hmm. with our current affairs. So for me, I personally feel that, and this has been a struggle for most of my life, but I'm a very compassionate person. I always have been. Mm-hmm. So even through my adversity in life, I've always had this innate ability to just love that person. And that's just probably why you turned out to be the way you are, because right. you didn't 
a lot of people, they internalize Mm -hmm. things that happen to them. And if they're not sure, I also see, too, in my work um, and in my life, where children that aren't in a compassionate (laughs) home, so to speak, Mm -hmm. they don't know how to be compassionate. Even though there there is some, I believe there's some natural compassion in everyone, mm-hmm. but I've seen where people, where you would think, you would think, hmm, wouldn't you think that person would think that, you know, And but they some just don't. And that can also be a chemical imbalance. Okay. Um, so over the years, there have been times where I questioned this gift. Mm-hmm. I now accept it as a gift, and, and mm-hmm. I'm very grateful for it, and I understand it and embrace it and love it. But there have been times where I was used, taken advantage of. Mm-hmm. And here I'm looking at this person or people or situation going, I love you. I just love you. And there's this thing that I write in my book called The Emotional Bank. Mm-hmm. And it's where you deposit your love, mm-hmm. your emotional goodness, and you withdraw from it. So I spent many years withdrawing from my emotional bank, but not receiving anything but bounced checks. Right. So it took me a long time and, and struggle. Well, why why can I not see people as jerks or bums or you know all of these negative things and, and become this um, individual who is non compassionate? And I'm just mm-hmm. I don't think I'm built that way. <laughs> no. But I've also had to understand that in in my world view, because I don't see borders, I don't see anything other than beautiful people. Like mm-hmm. when I'm up at doing my speaking engagements, it fills my heart up mm-hmm. with this amazing joy because I see all these beautiful people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and some cry and, and some are angry and that's that's not relevant to me. I don't really mm-hmm. see that. What I see are these beautiful people. And... Uh, so this last week I was trying to write on compassion so that I could really get this message out. Mm-hmm. And uh, and the, a story um, came to my mind about a few years ago. I had some coworkers and we drove to a meeting in Hampton. And uh, for those of you who don't know the Seacoast area, there are certain areas that are more clustery with vehicles at lunchtime Mm -hmm. than other areas. Mm -hmm. And this particular part of Hampton is very busy. Mm -hmm. Lunchtime, in the summer, Mm -hmm. you know. So you have your tourists for the beach and Mm -hmm. and whatever. And and, uh, one of the few times that I lost my temper, which I rarely ever do, somebody rear-ended me. And the first thing that came out of my mouth was, I'm going to slap you back into your mama and tell her to try again. Mm -hmm. Boy, I was mad. Who do you think you are? You must have been on the cell phone. All of these judgments and criticisms just popping out of my mouth. And then uh, once I had this little like temper tantrum, which I'm not accustomed to having, but once I did, I sat staring at my star- steering wheel going, what the heck just happened? Like, how did I fall so far out of my alignment mm-hmm. with compassion? Because I really don't. The person could have had a heart attack. Mm-hmm. I have absolutely no idea what this person's story is. I haven't even gotten out of my car yet. I did get out of the car, and I did talk to the person, and it was much calmer. I was actually feeling ashamed of myself for having this reaction. And, uh, yes, the person was on the cell phone, and they were distracted and driving, and so it was, you know, wasn't anything dire like having a heart attack or babies on the way or, mm-hmm. you know, some excuse that we would justify as right. okay. And I looked at this person, and I just, there was forgiveness, you know, but I had to deal with the shame of having right. that reaction. So um, what was good about that situation is that it really challenged me to acknowledge my human self, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, acknowledge that peace and to step outside of the situation. And then from then on, I really, really, really had to work hard Mm -hmm. in some circumstances, to step out of the situation without being reactive. But I also had to accept that I'm human and that knee-jerk reaction is very natural. So compassion, how do we all see and act in compassionate ways every moment of the day? Is that even a possibility? 
I guess it would be easier for some than others, and mm-hmm. that's kind of a pretty broad. Um, what I've always tried, and again, we're all human, we all have our moments, but mm-hmm. what I try to look at is the old adage, if you, you know, um, how would you want to be treated if you were in that situation? Sometimes you get, people are so quick to react um, that they don't think, part of compassion is actually thinking about taking the time to breathe and to think about that situation mm-hmm. and how you want to approach it. Because when you take that one second to think about it or that question, how would you want to be treated in this situation, it makes you step back Mm -hmm. and analyze it a bit. And that's when compassion comes in. When you react, the knee-jerk reaction, and that comes up, which it does occasionally, Mm -hmm. um, more often with some others and I right. can, but which is why we're having the show, right? Exactly. And the <laughs> thing is, is the media. Um, me and Rusty will will hog tie you guys about TV <laughs> and the negative. Um, you know, I watch some TV, but it's mostly educational. I don't listen to the news. Um, it's you know the whole political arena. You either know who you're voting for or you're not, or if you're voting or you're not, you just know. You know, <laughs> you can do, you know, there's so much negativity on so many aspects of life. And when you focus on that, you're missing those ca- compassionate moments in life. You're missing that, you know, today I had a child walk into my house to get on the bus. She had hatched a butterfly from a chrysalis and it was hanging on to her because <laughs> the wings weren't dry yet. Aww. And so we put him on, on our fairy house, which he liked quite Nicely. Yep. And we were all very concerned about this butterfly, getting it to school because there was a terrarium there. Mm-hmm. And she wanted to let it go out back at school. And so I went to the bus. We would talk about compassion, about a butterfly. <laughs> so we talked to the bus driver, and she had a seat by herself. So the butterfly and the bus driver talked to the kids, and not don't try to touch the butterfly. <laughs> but that was, to me compassion isn't just for fellow human beings it's for all beings Mm -hmm. for our you know furry friends and our you know this beautiful butterfly that just came in the world this morning that hitched a ride on (laughs) on indigo and came into my house which you know that was a moment that if i was working a nine to five job i wouldn't have seen you know what i mean so the compassion is we we were caring for this butterfly that mm-hmm. it makes it through its life. So there's a lot there's a lot to compassion. Um, and we have one hour to get through <laughs> some of it. So definitely call in, give us your stories and your struggles with finding compassion um, or being compassionate or you know your thoughts because we enjoy that. The number here is three four seven two zero five nine four four three. Or sign up for a free BTR account and chat away because I'm sitting here staring at the screen going, okay, I know it's rainy, but who's napping on me today? Good mm-hmm. gravy. Uh, today we're talking and discussing about we're going to have a nice discussion, just random thoughts about compassion mm-hmm. and how we can better better teach, teach that skill. Um, I have some friends that... Um, I have a variety of friends, and I'm very blessed. And, again, it's that gift of seeing everybody in their divinity, um, whether, you know, I don't see people for their size or their shape or their color or their beliefs. Um, I see people for people, and I think they're just beautiful. I, it's like this glowing thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's hard for me to describe, but it's even harder for me not to understand how everybody can't see the way I see. Mm-hmm. That, that's even harder. And it's not the judgment scene or the rules, that piece. It's the, oh, my God, you're so beautiful. And somebody um, over the weekend with all of the adventures that I have had referred to that stupid bum who was lazy in reference to a homeless person living on the streets. And, and I just looked at them and I said, do you really know this person's story? Do you know why they're homeless? Do you know them? You know, where do you get this judgment and this criticism Mm -hmm. from? Is this a knee-jerk reaction, which we are so accustomed to having? Mm -hmm. Because 
every aspect of our lives, we're filled with this negative, judgmental, critical stuff. And it's not working for us, folks. I mean, look at the state of the world and the current affairs. This is not working. Mm-mm. You know, it, we invented a wheel, but I think it's got a flat. So <laughs> let's uh, look at people as people and instead of judging them. Oh, look at that person as your brother or, right. you know, close relative right. and how would you feel? You don't know that person's story. Right. You know, you don't know that that person may have been a very prestigious, you know, business person or, you know, and lost their job. Um, you don't know their story everything. and lost everything. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of people don't know that Donald Trump was homeless once. Yep. That is and true. he, you know, he rose himself back up to, you know, what he calls power. But, um, you know, that's a materialistic. But the, the what point I'm trying to make is everyone can be that homeless person. Anybody can be that person. Anybody can be that high society person. It, where you put your mindset, but compassion um, is very lacking um, in the world today. Everyone is, you know, me, 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 Um, and compassion is, you you need to have compassion for yourself as well as for others. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, when you don't love yourself, you're not capable of fully loving another person, but like you said, you see, and I, I'm the same way, I mm-hmm. see good in people, and I've been treaded upon, and I've gotten angry in the past. Now I just, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, it's going to be what's going to be, and this too show pass is my mm-hmm. mantra for that. Um, so, you know, we have our ups and downs in our life, and it's how you react to them and, how, and what you do with it. And I react completely different than I would have 10 years ago yeah. um, to certain situations. And I think that we do need to learn more compassion. That's why we're having so much bullying in schools. Mm -hmm. The compassion is not there. Um, They feel that instead of being nice to someone to make themselves feel better, they don't realize that that can happen when you help somebody, that they have to put someone down to make themselves feel better. Well, and and I'm going to just pull you back a little bit. My personal belief is that compassion is there. I believe we all are compassionate beings innately. Oh, yes. I, I but said that. we're not training or conditioning. or conditioning ourselves to be compassionate. Mm-hmm. We are training and conditioning ourselves to be judgmental, criti- critical, mm-hmm. um, cris- cris- critical. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think I lost my tongue today. Um, we fill our lives with difference, which really mm-hmm. doesn't exist if you were to be a truly compassionate and and spiritual being, there is no difference. Um, that doesn't exist because these bodies are just, as Darwin said, in my mind, you know, we're brain in a vat. Mm-hmm. These bodies are completely different organisms mm-hmm. <laughs> that are conscious. You know, we have to feed it and nourish it mm-hmm. and rub it and hug it and, and you know, but it's a different, it, our bodies are our pet. <laughs> You know, Mm -hmm. if you think about it that way. Compassion is part of our soul, part of who we are on a divine level. Mm -hmm. So how do we go about unraveling this state of negativity? You know, how do we go, in my mind, and, you know, you're studying Buddhism as well, Mm -hmm. we have an eightfold path, and we demonstrate and become compassionate and wise. Mm -hmm. It's part of the Eightfold Path. And and I know in a lot of other religions, you know, compassion is a very huge aspect Mm -hmm. of the religion. How do we get more people to demonstrate compassion so that the next generation doesn't have the same issues that we've had for thousands and thousands of years? Well, that's my question. I know, well, I have, a li- I have a little challenge. <laughs> I put out on Facebook that, if you wanted to listen, that I had a little challenge regarding compassion, mm. which is part of, you know, Buddhism training. Yep. But it would be, any, it would anybody. be anybody. Because right. what my challenge is, and this is what this challenge does, not only does it have you go out and do random acts of kindness, which is part compassion, 
okay? You learn, you see, when you do these things, you get to enjoy that feeling and you actually open up because you 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 see it in a different way instead of saying, oh, look, he's a lazy bum, he has no job. Right. And right. Instead, why don't you, you don't have to give him money if you don't want to, if you think the person might, you know, Spend be an alcoholic, alcoholic or, or a, you know, a, a drug addict or something. We don't know their story. Go buy them some food and give it to them. That's right. what I do. Yep. I'll, in, I'll see people out, you know, begging, and instead of handing them $5, I'll go and get two breakfast sandwiches and two cups of coffee, right. and I'll bring it over to them. And they're very grateful for that. Yep. But I know I'm doing something in kind for them. I don't know for sure if they'd take that money. I don't know what they're going to do. But I know that I'm helping them and nourishing them, and they. I just made that person feel good and myself feel good all at the same time. So my challenge for everyone out there is over the next week, and you can um, comment on Rusty's Facebook page, uh, it's facebook.com backslash celiac roads and uh, earth energy um, on mm-hmm. Facebook. You can, um, you know, um, just put a little comment in there and see how it's going throughout the whole week till next week. And hopefully we'll have some comments to talk about. But I want you all to go out there and do 10 random acts of kindness, um, which is considered compassion. And let's see what you're doing, um, how you felt. Um, you know, what little um, miracles may have happened in in that time frame, and let's hear what you um, what that little project will do for you. And I'm going to up the ante on that because I am a Cheshire cat, <laughs> and I can do that. And out of that ten random acts of kindness, I want you to also consider the ten times this week, today, tomorrow, of frustration that you get from someone else and step back and acknowledge the frustration and look at that other person and try to figure out why that person challenges you so much. My pen pal in Switzerland and I, we have lengthy debate, debates, and uh, yesterday we had a really good one. I won't tell you the topic or anything, but um, he he's like, you're going to get angry. No, I gave that up a long time ago. <laughs> yes, while well, you're holding it in, you know. He doesn't understand why I don't honor that emotion. Um, but I am working through frustrations. I find mm-hmm. myself, I do get frustrated, which is being human. Yeah. You know, and it's not, uh, it's not a right or wrong thing. Anger is not a right or wrong thing. But it's being able to step back from that situation and look at the reason why you're having these emotions, these strong emotions, and what's challenging you. This person might just be annoying, but why do you see that this person is annoying? And I have a lot of friends on Facebook that sneak us in during their lunch break, and uh, sometimes they post some pretty frustrating remarks about their office environment. And I just look at them, and I, and I want to hug them and give them big kisses and tell them it's okay, you know, just step back. Mm-hmm. Take a step back and look at the situation compassionately. Look at the situation as... It is, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, and acknowledge why you are being intrapersonally challenged and interpersonally challenged. Mm -hmm. So that's my auntie. Mm. Who's going to take it? (laughs) (laughs) Well, since you're writing, (laughs) I I did that challenge a while ago, and it really made me open my eyes to, you know, you don't, really see yourself as a negative person because you see yourself having an opinion. Okay? But when you actually take this challenge, you really see how you would have knee-jerked reacted Mm -hmm. to that situation. I also want you to note that. And just be honest. There's no right or wrong. There's no, you know, contest or how many, nothing. We just want to hear how it affects your world. Um, I know it did mine. And it, that was the turning point for me to say, you know, um, this compassion thing really is the key, I think, mm-hmm. um, that's missing. That that one ingredient that was there once is mm-hmm. now magically not there. I'd like to see it reappear more often um, 
and I do see it mainly in children. That's why I love to spend time with children. Um, they get a certain age where they're very non-compassionate, but that's hormones. <laughs> <laughs> that's, hor- that's a challenge. <laughs> yeah, it is yeah, a challenge. A challenge. <laughs> so today I'm living and thriving with Rusty. I'm Rusty. And I'm Amy. We are discussing compassion, and if you want to put in your two cents or five cents or a cup of coffee, feel free to stop by or give me a call at 347-205-9443. Um, Amy is going through one of my favorite books. and uh, I had something here that I wanted to read, and of course I lost it, but... Um, this is um, a really good book. It's Invisible Acts of Power by Carolyn. Is it Mice or Miss? I, I think it's Mice. Mice. Um, Channeling Grace in Your Everyday Life. And it's um, it, it's a little mixture of some stories um, and um, self-help and um, the chakra system. It's mm-hmm. kind of a mixture of those three. Um, I really like um, it's kind of open in in the religion form it's very open mm-hmm. um so but it it's very true in in what um can happen and you can read mm-hmm. fun stories that like I asked you to, if you know little miracles happen and you know it doesn't have to be this fantastic thing that happens just little things it can be just a shift in your in your own consciousness to me that's a little miracle so so talk to me about how you are looking at the school situation in a compassionate way with a school change, with the Wednesday morning Looking at it as the teachers are more compassionate about having um, better programs for the children and that they're trying this out to see if it works because they don't seem like they have enough time to... Um, they don't have enough time to develop programs um, that they would like to see with the kids as far yeah. as teaching. Like they, they do workshops so they can um, have new ways of teaching and and fun things to do with the kids um, in learning and whatever they do in those – that's what they do in the workshops, which is normally half a day a month. Mm-hmm. So that's – and I understand that, and I'm grateful for that because mm-hmm. they – obviously it isn't just a – to change nine to five, they really want, you know, the teachers really want to improve this. Um, So I'm just, you know, I go with it. I'm trying to um, incorporate, you know, time with Ariana in the morning. Um, That's just her and I alone. So that's not been a bad thing. It's just getting used to. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Um. So there was this great article that was circling around the Internet in regards to a woman who is a Sikh um, and a young lady who goes to a university here in the United States. And uh, evidently she was standing in line waiting for books or something. Um, And she, because of her particular belief, they're not allowed to alter any part of their body. And she went through a hormonal thing and she has some fuzzies on her face. I think she's beautiful, personally, Mm -hmm. but um, some person decided to take a picture and make fun of her online. And she had the most beautiful response. You know, she explained what her religion is. She explained that, you know, a part of that religion is they're not allowed to alter their body whatsoever, Mm -hmm. and this is the way God made her, and it's her physical looks are not... um, important to her because her job is servitude and to make a better community and to be compassionate and to be loving. And that was her response to this That's awesome. Poor fella who thought he was funny. He was funny. Um as a result she has ended up, you know, really enlightening the world of this beautiful religion and her personality is great and I actually have uh, invited her to come on the show. Oh, yeah. So hopefully we we will hear from her soon. Um, it was so amazing and so powerful that she stood up and said, you know what, I'm really happy with who I am. So I'm a little fuzzy, but that's the way God made me. And Oh, well. Mm-hmm. And if you can't see past that, then, you know, she responded in a compassionate way. Right. And he ended up apologizing publicly, which was great. You know, and hopefully that seed was planted and, 
you know, he'll never make. I probably will change the way he thinks about things forever, which is That's those little point. yeah miracles that happen. Yeah. I'm still searching for that. Um, <laughs> and my pen pal in Switzerland just sent me another article in regards to people who are cyberbullying a. Uh, TV anchor, I haven't read all of it yet because I haven't had time, um, who happens to be heavy set, but she's a TV anchor. Mm-hmm. And Oh, I heard about that one. Yeah, I haven't yeah. read all of it. So definitely look up that because it looks like she really, she really uh, took a big bite out of cyberbullying. Yeah, I, I caught a little bit of it. Um, my husband had the news on the... TV and I walked in. I always shut. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I I caught the the end tail end of them talking about that. That's probably why I shut it off. But because <laughs> that kind of thing, you know, I've never been judgmental about anyone's appearance. Um, I think like you do, everyone's beautiful. Um, yeah. In their own way. Definitely. So we're talking a little bit about compassion. Waiting for you to call in to uh, give us some great stories. And the number here is 347-205-9443. We're going to go on a little break and come right back. Good afternoon, good evening to all my blessed beloveds out there. I want to let you know that I love you. I'm grateful for you. And uh, I just think you're beautiful. Um, Today we're talking a little bit about compassion. And if you have stories of compassion that you want to send me, my phone's texting thing keeps going off because tons of stories that I can't really multitask today. I haven't had enough coffee. Mm -hmm. Um, The number here is 347-205. 9443. I'm also checking the Facebook page uh, to see if you have any comments. And that's facebook.com backslash celiac roads. Love to hear your stories. Love to hear how you are compassionate, have been compassionate, try to practice compassionate, compassion in every moment, or how you're struggling with compassion. Because I know right now in the current events, it's been very, very difficult for some people to see this world compassionately when there's so much negativity out there. Mm-hmm. And I think that's very distracting. And struggle. And struggle. A huge struggle. Um, or, you know, come and hang out with me in the chat room for a little while and we can chat away. I uh, enjoy that. Did you find it, Amy? Yeah. yeah. All right. Go. Well, um, the one thing I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about is you were going into people having difficulty with compassion. Mm-hmm. Um, for those of you who um, love Reiki and that kind of thing, which um, is what I do, um, your third chakra is the chakra that is responsible for compassion. So um, sometimes you just need to rub that third chakra, which is right in your chest, right where your heart is. Isn't Mm -hmm. that funny? Um, Because being compassionate comes from your heart. Mm -hmm. So it's just fitting that it's your heart chakra that um, you need to work on. And um, I love this little um, third chakra prayer that I wanted to share, affirmation, whatever you want to call it. Um, I release into the universe my trust that my journey in life and all who walk my path with me are there by divine design. Therefore, I trust that along this path, others will also be there for me, even when I cannot see them waiting for me, and I open myself to be of service to those who may provide me the gift of empowerment. Now, what that's saying to the universe is that you're open, and it's okay, those bumps in the road that come, Mm -hmm. 
you're going to learn from them. They're there for a reason. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can learn from a good situation as well as a bad situation. And when you look at things with compassion, then you can see those things very clearly. And they work to empower you. And that's what that means. And the third chakra is an empowerment place. Um, and a lot of people that I work on, their heart chakras, are usually the ones I have to work on. Mm-hmm. Um, so that being said, um, you can put you can place your hand on your heart. And how I like to clear it is I like to just envision this beautiful white light circle around me. And any negative things that are in there, I just let them come right out and just flow right out of me. It can flow through your breath. It can throw, you know, into that white light and then disintegrate. However you want to, and visualize it. Just mm-hmm. sit there and breathe, and just let them, just let them gently be released and go. Um, and the more you do that, the more compassion you will, you will feel. Um, and then you'll be able to experience the feelings that come with compassion. Which is spontaneous bursts of laughter, and I get that all the time. (laughs) All the time. People laugh at me. They're like, why are you always so happy? I'm like, "Mm, it's just my am. Yeah, and, and, you know, um, it's funny you say that because that's what I thought of when I first met the Tibetan monks. They were like children, happy, beautiful, just want to kiss their cheek children, Uh, and they're so happy, and they're so full of love and compassion, and they have no worries. They have no ties to anything material. It's so refreshing and humbling to Mm -hmm. see that. Um, They're just, you know, I could just sit in their presence all the time, just that nice, beautiful energy that um, has no judgment, has no negativity, Mm -hmm. and um, they live so simply. They have a bowl and the clothes on their back. That's it. Mm-hmm. You know, and that, you know, I don't, uh, I'd like to give that challenge to you all out there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if many, many people would take that one on. And not even myself at this point, <laughs> not there yet. Um, but I have a lot of respect and compassion for them that they can do that. Mm-hmm. And what a lesson, or I don't even know if you'd call it a lesson, but it was very humbling to me. Yeah. One of the... um most beautiful moments that you can have as an individual when you are starting to explore the opportunities that are available to you in a compassionate light is the ease of stress. It is dumbfounding how we work ourselves up with all of these judgments and assumptions and criticisms and prejudices and discriminatory things and Gosh darn it, that bleep and bleep and computer frickin' whatever mm. computer company, you know, that kind of behavior. And, and if you step outside of that box and you go, okay, well, maybe it's time for me to unplug for a few minutes, walk away, come back. Um, and I've I've watched it for years when I was working in an office environment, individuals who just suck in that negative and spew out that negative, and then the next cubby will have this amazing aura of negative spew from this other person. So they're agitated, and then this person's agitated, and it just becomes this energetic contaminant, as I call it. You know, And that's when I would get up and go and make coffee for a long period of time. And it's very, very difficult to make a cup of coffee for a long period of time when you're dealing with a Craig. But <laughs> I managed to squeeze that out um, just to be away from that. And uh, so definitely try to look at things outside of those knee-jerk reactions. And sometimes, you know... I, some people they get drawn. I used to get drawn. Yes. Like I wouldn't even be part of it. You. And and, and <laughs> you know I look at it now a little differently. Um, I mean I have a lot in my life and I've accepted that I'm just a busy person and that's okay. Um, but I'm learning how to not get so tied up in others' drama, mm-hmm. which is also very freeing. And that's a form of compassion because mm-hmm. you're not adding to it. You're just taking yourself out of it. You know, I may be there for one or two of them to vent, 
mm-hmm. I don't necessarily have to give them an opinion. And that's well, hard. Well, and it's my one of my favorite quotes, and I'm not really sure which author it was because I read a lot, um, said, you know what? That's between God and them. That's mm-hmm. God's business. Yep. There's no, and when I heard that many years ago, it, it was like that darn cosmic two-by-four that always gets mm-hmm. me right in the fanning. I was like, oh, my God, you're right. So then you're able to let go of the attachment to that situation. You can definitely listen. You can mm-hmm. definitely hug. You mm-hmm. can definitely hold the hand. You can definitely allow to cry. But having that attachment is unnecessary because it really is none of your business. Right. Whatever the situation is. Because you have your own business, and there's mm-hmm. one appointment that we're all guaranteed to keep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? So stumbling along um, through this journey of compassion, I found a beautiful quote, and um, I just want to let it sit for a minute. I want everybody to hear it, because this is back to that knee-jerk reaction that we forget to be compassionate. Uh, The quote is, most people do not listen with intent to understand. They listen with the intent to reply. And that's by Stephen Covey. Hmm. That is so very true. So what resonates with you with that quote? Because I could go on for hours on how that just was like, oh, perfect. Because everyone, and this is where you're in your ego self, Mm -hmm. um, all of us do it, um, where you're not really truly listening to that person. You're waiting for that moment that you can just put in your two cents or your reply or your opinion. And that's what I've learned over the last couple of years is to really listen. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just are meant to be there to listen. Mm -hmm. You're not meant to react. You're not meant to, to, you know. um, And sometimes when you sit and think about something for a minute, you might not react the same way you would if you had replied that very second. Exactly. The snake in the grass syndrome. Mm-hmm. The rattlesnake in the grass. How many mm-hmm. of you out there have found yourself being reactive rather than thinking? And I think if more and more and more of us were to accept our compassionate nature and to step outside of this reactive zone that mm-hmm. we are very accustomed to, walking across the street, you're very busy, your mind is in five different places, you're trying to juggle your groceries and your children, and some guy doesn't allow you to be the pedestrian. In America, that's the law. Mm -hmm. If you see a pedestrian, you stop. But not everybody stops because they, too, are busy and they have their own story. And being an American, they usually don't. (laughs) Depends on the city. (laughs) It depends on the city. Um, How do you respond with a compassion compassionate response rather than this, oh, my God, you're such a jerk, which is a typical response Mm -hmm. for most people. It doesn't matter what country you live in, but that knee-jerk reaction, that hissing snake in the grass as you're trying to hike. Right. Um, I think that it depends, too, on, you know, what's going on in your situation. Um, But what, I, you know, you guys have all heard me talk about the delete button. Well, I have a pause button, too. (laughs) Um, <laughs> that's delete, <laughs> escape. <laughs> my escape button's not working. I know, mine's not either. What's up with that? I keep hitting it. Bermuda. No, <laughs> I digress. <laughs> <laughs> Only in um, yoga position in my living room can I hit the escape button. But um, Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's next week's topic. <laughs> Visualization, let's say now. Um I I can tend to, you know, a lot of people can, that knee-jerk reaction, like that's my mama bear syndrome, if I'm protective of someone, children especially. Mm-hmm. But um, I notice another thing that I, I'm doing that is like kind of like that, um, you know, when you smile at someone, instead of, you know, Smile at that person instead of saying something like that. Smile at them. Just smile at them. It doesn't take a lot of effort. Just smile at them and see what happens. Like, for instance, if you're at a four-way stop and you know that that awkward moment when nobody knows who's going to go, well, when I go, I wave. Like, thanks, you know. 
What's that good? Instead of, geez, these people don't know what they're doing, you know, you, you wave to them like, thank you. When you do that, it gives you a better sense, and the other two or three people that are in that intersection, they didn't, you know, get mad because you had a, a, a negative response to that situation. Um, or letting someone go, you know, letting a car out. When you're in traffic, just letting one car out. That's compassion. It's letting that person out. You know, there's all kinds of different small little ways that you can, that little baby steps, as we say, um, to compassion. But the more that you do it, it's easier to do, and it comes more naturally. One of my favorite things to do, aside from skipping, I just love to skip, <laughs> um, uh, and smile. I do a lot of smiling, a lot of just these spontaneous acts of me. humor. That's me. <laughs> um, is if there is a, like if I'm going to my favorite coffee place and the person is a little grumpy, I'll just start laughing. Mm-hmm. Purely start laughing at them. And they look at me <laughs> funny, and I'm just like, bah! <laughs> Or make a funny face at them. Or I'll make a funny face at them. Or even when I'm motivationally speaking, I'll say, look to the person to the right of you and stick your tongue out. <laughs> look to the person to the left of you and stick your tongue out. And at first, they're like, well, has she fallen off her horse? <laughs> yes, a few times. <laughs> yes, I have. But I have my angel wings, so we're good. Um, but the reason for that is to loosen you up, to mm-hmm. let go of that ego, to let go of that fear. No one's going to hurt you. This mm-hmm. path that you're on is your path very much from the beginning to the end. And you invite people in, and they come out, mm-hmm. and they're in, and they come out. But nobody's going to walk this path but you. Mm-hmm. And how you can have a more enjoyable walk versus one with lots of obstacles, enjoying the compassion, enjoying the laughter, because that is a very happy, wonderful, soulful place. And uh, my local coffee shop, they now give me stickers. <laughs> every, time, every time I go through, they're like, here, here's a you know, Hello Kitty sticker or whatever. You're the star for the day. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was training. That was mm-hmm. training them not to have a grumpy day because, you know what, it's not worth it. Spending it's, that energy is not worth it. And you're beautiful. And having the nice energy and the happy energy yeah. and the calm energy is so much more appealing. It's so much. It opens up so many more doors. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> So a while ago, our reverend uh, at the church that we attend, the Unity Church, non-denominational church in uh, New Hampshire, reminded me of one of my favorite poems. When you read as much as I do, you forget mm-hmm. things. It just You file it in your cabinet and it just goes. And it's in regards to um, Thine Nat Han's experience with um, some refugee camps and how he read a letter. I'm going to make it short so I can actually read the poem. He read a letter about a a little girl who was on a boat and a pirate um, raped the little girl and she was so ashamed. I think she was 12. She was so ashamed that uh, she jumped off the boat and committed suicide. And he looked into this very deeply and meditated on it for quite some time, trying to figure out why it's so easy for us to shoot the pirate. And, of course, we take the girl's side, and it's compassionate, that's what we do, but our automatic, instinctual reaction is to shoot the pirate. Mm -hmm. And this is a very hard concept for a lot of people. And I go back and forth with some of my pen pals in regards to how easy it is for us to condemn, to discriminate, to criticize, to judge, Mm -hmm. to shoot the pirate, rather than to look at the pirate with compassion and figure out how not to make any more pirates, which mm-hmm. is my sole purpose of being on this planet mm-hmm. is to plant more good seeds. And and uh... So he writes this poem, Call Me By My True Names. And I think it's just, I think it's a great way to look at compassion. Mm-hmm. Do not say that I'll depart tomorrow because even today I still arrive. Look deeply. I arrive in every second to be a bud on a spring branch, to be a tiny bird with wings still fragile, learning to sing in my newest nest, to be a caterpillar in the heart of a flower, to be a jewel hiding itself in a stone. I still arrive in order to laugh and to cry, 
in order to fear and to hope. The rhythm of my heart is the birth and the death of all that are alive. I am the mayfly metamorphosizing on the surface of the river. I am the bird which, when spring comes, arrives in time to eat the mayfly. I am the frog swimming happily in the clear pond. And I am also the grass snake who approaches in silence and feeds itself on the frog. I am the child in Uganda, all skin and bones. My legs as thin as bamboo sticks. And I am the arms merchant selling deadly weapons to Uganda. I am the 12-year-old girl, refugee on a small boat, who throws herself in the ocean after being raped by a sea pirate. And I am the pirate, my heart not yet capable of seeing and loving. I am a member of the Pl- Plataboro with plenty of power in my hands, and I am the man who has to pay his debt of blood to my people, dying slowly in a forced labor camp. My joy is like spring, so warm it makes flowers bloom in all walks of life. My pain is like a river of tears, so full it fills the four oceans. Please call me by my true names, so I can hear all my cries and laughs at once, so I can see that my joy and pain are one. Please call me by my true names, so I can wake up, and so the door of my heart can be lift, left open, the door of compassion. That's beautiful. But that is, you know, especially in this country, um, we don't see things for what they really are. We want things, um, and then we have those things. We want more things. <laughs> um, I'm learning more to appreciate the natural wonders. Um, I've always been attracted to nature. Um, And like the butterfly story of today and my hummingbird story of watching the mama hummingbirds teach their babies. I mean, that is television. That's my television. That's what I like to see and um, share with my children. Uh, I hope that us discussing this today will open a few more hearts that, you know, it can be easy to be loving and kind, um, and it gets easier and easier each time you do it. Mm-hmm. And it's the way we're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. We're not supposed to be brutalizing each other, terrorizing each other, judging each other, because you have one appointment to keep, and that appointment may be long, it may be short. Right. You know, <laughs> and that's, that's your business. Yeah, they don't tell but, us when that appointment time is. <laughs> but so, we all have, have it. it. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, you know... So it's it's a lot easier of a path and a much more beautiful path mm-hmm. to step outside of that box and see people for who they are. Right. Because all of the other stuff, that's that's just dirty water. Yeah, and a lot of it hasn't even been, it, you know, it's put upon people. Mm-hmm. Um and when you can when you can truly help someone transform is when you do see that true self when you see past all that and see that true person that person will recognize it mm-hmm. and that's when that miracle happens that shift happens in that person encouraging uh, good behavior right yep you know um you know i'm lucky in the industry that i am that i get to experience more of that than mm-hmm. most um that's our common goal um as a holistic, holistic practitioner and um as I stepped out of that whole materialistic world, I'm attracting more people like that, which Mm -hmm. I love. Um, You know, like walking into unity, I'm like, how come I did not find this? You know, I wasn't ready to, evidently, and I'm not trying to figure it out. I just, I'm grateful for it. Mm -hmm. And that's what, you know, a lot of people try to do, why, all the whys. Sometimes you just have to let go of the whys Mm -hmm. and just appreciate it and say thank you and be grateful. Absolutely. So remind us of our challenge because we've got to wrap up the show. Okay, your challenge today, at least my part, you can say your part. (laughs) Um, My part for your challenge is to do at least 10 random acts of kindness, which is compassion. And that's being um, kind to someone else without being asked and having it be, having compassion be your knee-jerk reaction. Um, to uh, approach today, this week, and love to hear your stories and what happened, and you know how you felt and how it may have changed your world a little bit. And now, Rusty said, "Mine is to look at people, especially those of you, my beloved friends, that I think 
uh, just are beautiful. Um, those coworkers, in particular, bosses or wherever you frequent your days, um, and the ones that challenge you to have reactions of frustration, eye rolling, fist clenching, teeth clenching moments, and step outside of that moment and look at them differently and look at that as a challenge, a challenge within yourself. What is that person challenging within yourself? Okay. Well, let's hear about the, all of those and um, yeah. be uh, be fun to see what people have to say. Absolutely. Everybody's yeah. journey is going to be different, so that's why we love what we do here on Living and Thriving. Absolutely. So as we wrap up the show on this rainy, humpity hump day, I have a Cheshire grin on my face. I've had one all day. I had an hour and a half meditation. Woohoo! Yay! That feels good. I love it. Mm. Um, and uh, just great exploration in life. And, you know, feel free to inundate me with your stories. If you don't want to share publicly, that's fine. Um can definitely keep you anonymous. Mm-hmm. But uh, welcome all the new fans. We have quite a few in California now. Hello! Yay. Cali, <laughs> beautiful state. I loved uh, Arcadia, 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 uh, about 45 minutes south of Oregon. Mm. That's where you get the mountains and the caves and the ocean. And oh, that's the other mountains I haven't visited yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so that was beautiful, and quite a few people there that have chimed in on uh, our website and so forth. And uh, if you don't mind, feel free to hopefully. It's on now. I'm not sure the Women Who Shine nomination. I would be grateful because I just would like to uh, be able to do more for you. And this financial gain would allow me to do more for you quicker. (laughs) It'll still happen. It's just taking a little bit of time to schedule and, and finance all of the motivational speaking things that I'm trying to pull together so I can meet you in person and hug you in person and and laugh at you and make you stick your tongue out at other people. (laughs) And sit down and have tea with us. And have tea with us, absolutely. So I love you. I'm grateful for you. You are beautiful. Enjoy. Have a great day. Be kind to one another and be well. Talk to you next week.